Aha, this is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Guys, if you are interested in Rune Light and Darkness, check it out on Kickstarter while the campaign is still going. It's a very cool next generation dungeon crawler game with different game modes and the art style of the minis are awesome with this cartoonish high fantasy vibe. There are only a few days left of the Kickstarter campaign, so make sure you check it out. I primed the mini with Valaiho's Mecha Black Primer. For our base tone, I apply Rhinox Hide with a 0.2mm airbrush. My compressor is at 6 psi and the paint consistency is one part paint and one part thinner. It's quite thin, so I need to be very gentle with the airbrush trigger. Trigger control is key for a smooth surface. Try to practice on a paper towel or on your hand to see if the pressure is right for you. Aim the airbrush from above to spray down on the model. Give it a few coats and leave the extreme shadows black. This color works great for the softer shadows because it's a cold brown with a hint of purple. Let's start working on that nice fat belly. This time I use Bugman's Glow. It's a great foundation for a human skin tone as well, but I like to give a little bit of human look to demonic looking creatures with skin tones because it makes it more disturbing looking. I leave the recesses darker and I build up the highlights toward the chest. The paint consistency and air pressure is all the same as in the previous step and it's going to be the same throughout the whole tutorial. The consistency might be a little bit harder to control, but you can work with it for a very long period of time without clogging the airbrush. I made a highlight reference photo and I attached it to the Patreon post so you have a better understanding of how I build the highlights for this miniature. The link for that is in the video description. Let's get back to the other part of the skin and highlight it with Dumbo Brown. This warmer brown will be a nice foundation for the orange skin and it works well for the calluses on his back. Papa Labors highlights the shoulders and back as well with the head and hands. I want to make the head the meeting point for the different skin tones, so the lower jaw will have the same colors as the belly and the upper part of the skull will have the same colors as the shoulders and the back. Grab a brush now and sketch the highlights on the belly. I mix some Morgas Bone to the Bugman's Glow to push the contrast and make the skin more pale looking. Highlight the top part of the stomach and chest to emphasize the lower folds on the belly as well. These highlights will look a bit out of place, but later I will blend it with an airbrush to make it smooth like Granny's butt cheek. Now it's time to blend with the airbrush. Remember the gentle trigger control? Now this is the time where it's really important to do it like that. If your paint starts webbing, then wait a bit more between the bursts and uh, dry it. Little burst, then dry. Little burst, then dry. It's all about drying very diluted paint very fast, so it's like we are glazing with the airbrush. I also show you how I blend without an airbrush. You just have to thin down your paint to a glaze consistency, which is one part paint, one part water, and move your brush in the same direction every time. So if you use Bugman's Glow, start the brush stroke in the Bugman's Glow slash Morgan's Bone highlight area and move it to the Bugman's Glow layer to smooth it out with this diluted paint consistency. It takes a couple of layers to achieve the effect, but it's worth the time and a little bit back and for glazing with the colors always helps more to achieve a smoother finish. I mix some Parasite Brown to the Dumbo Brown and reduce the highlight areas on the darker skin part. I try to paint around the calluses or uh, rocks on the surface. We want to work with these highlights in a way that it creates the maximum bang for our uh, money shot. The money shot is basically the best angle for the miniature. Since the game is out on Kickstarter, I just check the angle of the 3D render and I make sure I highlight it in a way that works best for that exact angle. Since the miniature is looking to the right, it would be weird to highlight it if the light is coming from the left. So I place my highlights as the light is coming from the top right angle. 
if you watched uh, Papa Labor's tutorials before, then you know that uh, this is a brand new thing here on the channel. To push the orange hue on the skin, I use Parasite Brown. I use thin layers to build up the opacity and have a smoother transition. I don't make this part of the skin as smooth as the belly, because it's a rougher surface. I like to have some contrast in texture for the miniature, and I think this hard skin, soft skin effect uh, looks really good next to each other. Reminds me of uh, Granny's belly and back. She got some uh, terrible blisters on her back as well. Anyway, I just realized the little minions under him are not a decoration of the chains, but alive creatures. So I guess these are his little demon spawns. So I use the same brands and oranges to paint them. After the sketching is done, I blend the colors the same way I did in the previous step. Now it would be a bit harder to use the airbrush for uh, blending and we don't need to blend everything perfectly. Like the highlights on the knuckles can work how they are, don't need to smoothen them out. Oh and on the back of the miniature, don't be afraid to reduce the highlight areas drastically because it will create a more dramatic effect in the end. Then I painted the eyes with white grey. I wanted to push the contrast on the skin a bit more, but I didn't want to use the saturated colors for that. So I mixed some white grey to the parasite brown to do that. I really tried to focus around the shoulder, head and the hand. These are the parts where our final highlight uh, should go, so with every step our light search should be more and more defined. Let's do the same with a mix of Morgan's bone and Bugman's glow. I go back to the chest and only highlight the chest part uh, by giving it a bit more texture with some horizontal lines to look like some old man muscle. I mean, uh, <laughs> I can't really describe it, but you know, you might have an uncle who is uh, 72, still goes to the gym, so there is some definition there, but it's a bit uh, soggy, you know? So that's the effect I was after. Uh, use thin layers again to blend in this new layer of highlight. Find these fibers more with pure Morgas bone and reduce the highlight areas. I go back to the mouth area to push the contrast on the lips too. Mix some sky grey to the highlights and reduce the highlight areas even more. This way we achieved a nice texture contrast between the chest and the belly and also move their focal point towards the head. After that I mix black with Nagarot Knight to paint the lower part of the rocky blisters. This will make them more defined and the purple gives some nice depth to our shadows. I use the thicker consistency for the paint because we don't really need to blend these parts. Ok, now we grab a brush with a nice tip and paint the edges of the rocky blisters to make them stand out more. If you prefer the laser method for this, you can just dry brush it. Try to find the edges on these parts and if there's not any, then just come up with a random pattern. Make sure your paint flows nicely from your brush and not overly diluted or I will slap on your tiny hand. Do the same thing to the horns. My edge highlights was a bit messy here, so I went back and fixed it with Rhinox highlights. Let's cover all the teeth with the mix of Parasite Brown and Dumbul Brown. This layer will act as the recess shadow for our teeth. We could leave it black, but since it's on the head, I mean it uh, could be in his armpit, uh, that would be a cool concept for a monster, but anyway, black would be a too harsh uh, recess shadow, in my opinion, so we paint it to a bit higher value. Now we highlight the teeth with Morgan's bone. On the small one I just uh, covered the whole tooth, but on the bigger fangs I try to highlight it in a way uh, so I create a shape of a narrow triangle with the shadows. Okay? This will add a nice depth to the teeth and uh, quite easy to do. Just use a brush with a fine tip for that.
For the leather parts, I used flat bram covering 80% of the surface. I covered the belts all around his body, the skirt in the back and the rim of the shoulder guard. On the belt around his chest, I tried to keep the recess shadow in the middle and I used thin layers to blend in the color. On the leather skirt, I just sketch out some highlights and leave 40% of the surface black. I'm not going to highlight the back as much as the front to keep this dramatic effect of uh, volumetric highlights going. Okay? On the egg cases, I forgot to highlight the lower part, so you can do that now. Just make sure you have one side highlighted more than the other. Uh, since our light source is coming from the right, which is from the left if we are looking at the miniature from behind, it's the right side of the egg cases should be highlighted more, okay? Which is actually the left <laughs> if we look at it from behind. I'm sure you guys get it. On the shoulder, I cover 80% of the surface and leave a darker part towards the hand. I also use some layers of glaze to blend in this layer on all parts we covered. Let's use Steel Legion Wrap to add some texture to these leather parts. On the belt, I edge highlight the leather strap and make small lines and dots on the surface to create some weathering effect on the leather, like it has some uh, scratches all over the surface. This will make it visually more interesting and it's quite easy to do, just make sure you shape your brush's tip to be pointy as granny stone is and you use a consistency that is nicely controllable but not too runny, okay? We do the same thing for the straps on the eggshells. On the shoulder guard, I wasn't sure how I wanted to paint it. But after uh, giving it some thought, I went with a bone shoulder guard with some leather covering. So the previous brown layer will act similarly like we had a brown layer for the shadows on the teeth. So I start to highlight it uh, as grooves of a big bone. Don't ask what kind of creature has this kind of bone, but maybe it's a uh, dragon uh, vertebra, okay? So add some texture to this part, as if those were the grooves of a big oil bone. Continue the process with Morgan's bone. Make a bit more finer lines this time and uh, make sure you don't cover all of our previous layers. We are going to paint the spikes on the shoulder the same way we did the teeth. I just uh, didn't want to paint them as long as I uh, used those as an anchor for my hand. With a mini of this size, uh, it's highly recommended to use some gloves while uh, painting. This will prevent you from scraping off paint from the model, uh, and they may have some uh, paint over them, but they have a dry surface and your hands have some oily layers on them by nature, no matter how frequently you wash them. And that can move some dirt on the model, and we do not want that. Now for the eggs on the back, I think of something really simple, just cover them with steel legion drab. You can leave the right side of them darker to be consistent with the rest of the highlights. After that create a pattern on their surface with Rhinox hide. This uh, pattern somewhat looks harmonic with the skin pattern of the big guy. I'm guessing these are the eggs for his uh, minions that he can spawn or maybe he stole these eggs and the adventurers need to get it back. I don't know, but it creates an interesting story for the mini. Let's get back to the shoulder guard and uh, paint the armor surface with Rhinox hide. Cover everything with this color and leave the recesses black. Now we use flat brown and cover 70% of the Rhinox high layer. You can create some scratch lines on the armor to blend in the color easily, like we did on the bat. On the big spikes, leave a tiny black line between the root of the spike and the binding ring around it. It's a small detail, but it gives so much depth and uh, cleanliness on the model. Okay, and we use Steel Legion Drab and Morgas Bond for the final highlights, like we did before. It's exactly the same steps, but uh, you can leave the bottom part of the spikes completely black, since those would create drop shadow anyway. Now 
Now it's time for the non-metallic parts. I wanted to create a dark metal uh, for these chains and flail he is swinging. Very bright silverish enemy would be a bit more dissonant with a character like that. So I covered every metal bit with a previous mixture of black and Nagarot Knight. I'm not painting the back of the flail because uh, I like to make an OSL effect uh, for that area. On the skull I cover around 50% of the surface so that way uh, it will be nice and dark when moving on to highlight it more. I like to keep the volumes of the highlights so if I create too big of a highlight on this part it will draw the attention from the face. On the chains I cover everything uh, on the parts that face towards our light source. Let's push the values with London Grey. Reduce the highlight areas and start to highlight everything with an edge. I cover around 50% of the chain's flat parts with some thin layers. I only blend the colors on the skull to emphasize the spherical shape on the top. On the flail I try to define the edges of the blade and add some detail to it with some thinner lines. Continue the process with pale grey blue and reduce the highlights as well with edge highlights. For the chains I think it looks cool if there is a little edge highlight on the edgy part of the chain, like uh, on the corner. After the NMM was done I went over and painted the eyes of the minions with sky grey. Then I wanted to make an OSL effect uh, on the corner of the base. The easiest way to do that is to grab the airbrush and dark vermilion and spray it all over the mini from one angle. Same consistency and air pressure as before. I slowly build up the opacity and try to reach uh, under his arm and weapon with the paint. I chose red because it's an aggressive color so it's uh, creating an alarming presence for the character. Now I switch to the brush and grab Evil Sun Scarlet to make the areas affected by the light a little bit more defined. On the weapon is basically the same approach. Edge highlight and build up the opacity with thin layers. If your layers are a bit thicker then go back with the airbrush and blend them in. Make sure you paint the skull buckle with this red uh, because it will create a very tasty uh, OSL effect. Don't go further with the red uh, so the OSL placement will look consistent. Then I use Wide Rider Red to push the contrast more. The closer to the surface, the higher the values you can use. You might be thinking that the belly should receive some of the, the thread too. And uh, yeah, that would be very cool and nice, but it's pretty hard to reach those parts uh, with the brush, unfortunately. So make sure you edge highlight all the chains with this color, but only the side that face towards a red light. Lastly, I mix some sky grey to the white rider red and paint the parts where the light is most intense. I also add this layer where the shape is completely facing down, like on the bottom of the hands, since those parts will be darker because of the drop shadow they create. For the base, I used some flat brown and parasite brown moving the highlights toward the corner. I painted the edge of the base black and gave some direction to the eyes. With that Gorgoroth is done and ready for the table. And if you guys interested in the game, make sure you check it out on Kickstarter. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Bloody Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Vlad D, One Shot Joe Crafts, Glitchy Mac Rash, Guillaume Belanger. If you want to support the work of Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon. You will have early access to these videos, it's some exclusive content, there are monthly PDF guides, and if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.